Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're very pleased uh, for our uh, first uh, talk of the last day to have George Papas from Michigan State, who's going to tell us about finite and chaotic transcendence type environments. Okay, thank thanks to the organizers for setting this great conference, and thanks for the invitation. Uh, so, as so, I'm going to talk about finite and chaotic transcendence, but uh, so I've been told that my talk. It fits well with the theme of the conference. I'm not sure that's true, because, for example, uh, from the point of view of quantum field theory, I have nothing really. Somehow, it's all about for the physics. It's all about the action. Somehow, there's never any summation. There's no path in the graph. There's nothing like that in what I'm going to discuss. And of course, it's all in the arithmetic setting. So there's no quantum, there's no field theory. The only field theory is for number fields. So. <laughs> OK, but let's uh, let's start with uh, some classical setup. So I'll start with three minor tools. So I'm going to review some of the standards and assignments. So for me, it's always closed, oriented, and connected. Let's say I have a representation of well, the fundamental group in PHL2C, and I can think of it as a vector bundle with flat connection. Uh, and now there's this following uh, integral. What you can do, there's some normalization factors that I, mean, I might get wrong. So you integrate over manifold the following thing. So you can pick uh, the vector bundle can be trivialized, pick a section. So I assume it's a trivial bundle and the connection is given by some kind of matrix, I guess. And then you arrive for this type of expression. Maybe you've seen it before. A is the connection, uh, connection matrix. And then this is somehow the basis of, well, part of the Sir Simon's theory or beginning of that. And so there's another interpretation of this in which you do the following. You start with the functional of this uh, homology group that I will denote by B. So it goes into C mod C, which I identify the imaginary part and the real part, which is settled. Uh, that's given by something called the regulator. So this is the real regulator, or a version of it. Uh, sometimes people think of the B inside the cohomology. Same thing. And then what you can do is the following. Is up there, so you so you think of your representation as giving you so I'll compose with the representation here to uh, take you here. What can you do with this? It's accepted it's like that. Um, inside here, you can find the fundamental class. It comes from H3M, but then in this case, uh, this is the same as a group homology, the fundamental group homology. And so then it's, it's what we get is a following equality. So this is a theorem that it's like a classical thing. So let's write this H3. No, so if I look at this composition, and I evaluated the fundamental class, I get the same thing. And so it makes sense to think of this as CS depending on your choice of this regular. Okay. So the main example here is the following. So let's say M is hyperbolic, and I can write it as hyperbolic free space divided by so subgroup gamma, say gamma is inside BSL2Z, which are the orientation preserving 
hyperbolic automorphisms like that. Let's say this has no fixed points, and so that the fundamental group is also German. So you have this. Oops, PSL to see. In this case, you can lift this the representation of SL to see. So you can let's call this R R uh, R. Sorry, and now. Uh, so what happens in this situation is if I look at uh, I had before, oops, and I can take a, a real part of it. Maybe there is some normalization here, but this is what is called the Sir Simon's variant of a manifold dam, or you think of it for the metric, like the hyperbolic mm -hmm. metric. And then if I do the imaginary part, this is again, maybe I have a sign wrong here, I don't know, but I don't say that this is the hyperbolic point of that. So, so somehow this invariant kind of contains both the hyperbolic volume of the, of the manifold and this turn Simon's invariant of the manifold for the manifold. And so some people call it the invariant the complex volume. Maybe I don't know, maybe there is some constant in front, but it doesn't make sense if you think so. Say this is a complex volume. Okay. So this is uh, The first kind of instance of the classical story, and the second, maybe right up here, is diagram with a theory. Anyway, so that Sir Simon's acts, this is the action for uh, one of the most kind of famous quantum field theories, I guess. If I say the correct words, I'm not so sure here. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, okay, uh, and then uh, there is a variation. Which is by this written in which uh, instead of having SL2C, you switch to a finite group. And this was considered as a toy example of these spheres, right? And uh, so how does this work? This is a toy example. It's yeah, and now I find it. And I pick the cohomology class here with because this finite this is the same as Q mod Z, but he says. And I can view how my guys giving me the uh, function out on the homology. Okay. Right now, again, if I start with a, say a representation, now in this case, you can think of it as a Z cover of the manifold. You start from this, you can do exactly the same construction as before. So you kind of think of the fundamental class giving you something in H3 by one hand. So here is going to be, I'm sorry, Z. Now you use the rod that puts you into Z, then you combine with the omega to get something Q mod Z. And so we can set CS omega, maybe I should call this DW omega, but I think I'll stick with C as for everything, uh, all raw, to be uh, this composition. So it's exactly the same type of thing as before. Here is something in one Z. 
And well, this is the action of, supposed to be the action of the theory. In this case, you can make sense of even the path integral because these are all finite discrete things. So you can uh, do this. So you can sum up over all the rows. Now you put this guy as an exponent to get the root of unity, so you can add up so this is a mess. But you write the sum, and this is what the toy example of Dagra Witten or you know, there's a T Q of T that's associated to that, and that's the value for the theme and for the now in this case we can extend actually rigorously to the whole T Q of T as far as I understand. It's done by I think three. Okay. So these are the classical examples, and my talk is about like exploring similar constructions in arithmetic or number theoretic setup. That's a, that's it. So and the first, uh, I guess, person that thought that this is a good idea is me, you, and Kim, that defined the arithmetic version of a diagram with a construction. So I will start by uh, talking about this. But any questions so far? I mean, why is that? Why is it not varying two modular z? It's like some loose unity. Yeah, you add up a bunch of roots of unity. That's the invariant. I mean, that's it. Oh, but I'm <laughs> just saying, like, you define something in q modular z, right? Then you give a formula which takes the value in. Oh, can I do this? Yeah, no, I start with Q mod Z, I can think of it as a root of unity also, just add up. So root of unity, okay. I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, okay, so I wrote it like that. This is weird. Yeah. All right, so what's the arithmetic version of this due to me here, <laughs> Yeah, we start with finite group. Now I'm taking integers. And yeah, plus now I'm going to make a class in that group, C mod n. There's a reason for that, not Q mod C. And now we start with n, say, over k, a gamma extension of number fields. So these are number fields here. And um, we assume the following two things. So first of all, that the primitive and fluid unity belongs in K. And second, that this is unramified everywhere. Yeah, the G is a finite, yeah, the G, so I fix a finite group in all this stuff. Oh, you look at all. Yeah, so fix, fix. So somehow you start with fixing this. Okay, and now I vary the number first. Okay. So, okay, so now because I said it's a ramified everywhere, I can look at the ring of indexers. This gives me a, a Z cover and I call Z cover. So let's call this X, let's call this Pi. And now I can do something very similar as before. It's just dually expressed. So, so this is a Z torsor, and so a tau Z torsor, you get uh, a map uh, into a, cl a tau classifying space of the binary group Z. So maybe I call it bracket uh, pi. And now you're playing the same game. So I view this in H3 B Z. The tau makes no difference. Actually, well, I have to be a little bit careful here, but it does not make a difference. So you go from here, uh, so to 
pulling back by five to eight three x z to ten. This is the tau cohomology. And now you use the fact that you have a root of unity to take you into this, where I use mu n as a shift in the tau topology here. So here I, I use like one goes to the land to do this. And now it's a fact that this is a statement that's often a part of what is called art in their gear duality. That this is the same as Z mod n. So you do the same type of thing as before. So you follow some omega here and you get something in Z mod n. And so this is uh, uh, mean your team's arithmetic term Simon's action, I guess. So the would be. If you want to do a similar thing without roots of unity, could you just work with an omega in G mu n and talk about yeah, you could do something at some right? Yeah, you could uh, you could land into something else. I will do some variations okay. like that, uh, but then you need to invert n. It's a little tricky. I mean, so there's some compromises you have to. So there's many choices somehow these things. But so I can sort of define this to be again uh, the same composition. So, like, what is it? so phi? Uh, okay, I want to write is the composition. So, omega, the image of omega and the wrist chain of mass. Right? So, this is the definition. Right. So we're okay to go this so far. So this is a definition. And now it kind of makes sense to consider also a path in the graph here. You can add up all of you know, over all of these things. So you fix the key number field K, you can look at all the Z covers, all the ramified Z covers, and write the sum as before. But I'm not really gonna talk about uh, the path in the ground here. I'm just going to discuss the action. So just the definition of the environment. OK, so when you first see this, you're saying, this is weird. How come I didn't think of this before? <laughs> right? I mean, this looks so easy. And in particular, well, this is, a, a, I think, a, that's how great math is supposed to be, right? Something that it's, it's interesting. but looks interesting, but there's a test. The first test is, did I define something really stupid in an elaborate way? Maybe we solve it <laughs> trivial, for example, right? So the first thing is try to understand what that is in some simple case, right? So say G is a cyclic group or something. Is there something that we know from before? Or maybe we don't. So let's, so let's discuss. The case is Z mod n, the cyclic group. In this case, there's a very kind of natural omega you can pick. You can start with uh, the identity is giving you a class here, and then you can stop this with the image of the identity, oops, under the box sign. The box sign goes from Z mod n to H2. It's like the connecting map with the obvious sort of exact sequence. You need to put Z mod n squared in the middle. So you cut those two things and you go in H3. So that's like an easy kind of thing. So omega would be this brackets. Right? And you can try to figure out what that is, right? Okay. So it turns out that this this is something we sort of knew before. So I'm gonna say that this is given using I'll explain how CFD, 
And now this is not conformal field theory. <laughs> <laughs> this is class field theory, <laughs> as you'd expect, right? Okay. Uh, so let me explain this because I think this is a neat formula. Okay, so I have n over k, which is uh, everywhere around ramified and gala extension plus the theory tells you that. Uh, it's given by a character on the class group. So this is the ideal class group. So the RP map. So class group here produces the RP map. Okay. Let's go to this extension. But now there's something else you can do. So remember, we had also all n over all k. And I can construct a, a kind of canonical uh, element in the class group from this using Kummer here. So you can do the following. Let's say set, this is my notation, for the isotypic part of ON where the gala group acts by multiplication by that chosen root of unit. So I will write it, let's write it, X in ON, so let's say A mod N times of X, so this you think of it as a Gala group element acts by multiplication by that. So it's not hard to see that this is a locally free rank one OK model. So get a class in the class group. Okay, so now the formula that describes uh, arithmetic and Simon's environment is this. Well, you take that class and you evaluate the art in map on it to get an element Z mod n, so it's very nice. Maybe I put a bracket everywhere. That's it for me. So this is a nice kind of construction that you know, it's very classical thing. It's strange a little bit, but also nice. Okay, so now uh, <coughs> what happened here? What is A in your definition of? Oh, and say that. Oh, I'm saying that. Oh, sorry. That would be a. So for any A, sorry. Okay. That is suppose. I'm sorry. I forgot the A. Now it's understandable. Yeah, thanks. So, so what's happening here is we really do the following. So we can write them up like this. By the way, you can see that this is this class is n torsion. This is an n torsion class, so it really lands in the n torsion so class. Depends on the choice of the loose unit. Ah, uh, sort of, yeah, right. But then the other definition doesn't. No, the other definition does. Yes, I it used, somewhere. I sent Z mod n to mu n by making it by the choice of root of unit. It, it does the yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so I have, so what's going on is there's a map like that that we've used. So, to this extension, I sent the class of this guy. Okay. This is, this is, by the way, called the class invariant homomorphisms in the class Calfir Gala model structure. But we also have like a very, we have like the obvious pairing where we do this. Just evaluate to go to Z mod n. So compose now, uh, compose this with this, we get the following. Okay. 
Yet the pairing on the dual for the class group is in And so this is the mechanism that sort of underlies what's going on in this when you think about this class. It's given by these pairings. You can think of it as a linking pair. Uh, all right, so here's my point now. So this guy is an additional structure on the class group. that appears when you have a root of union. So you cannot make such a pairing if you don't have the root of unity. So when you have a root of unity, the end root of unity, then the class group acquires this extra structure. So this is exactly what's happening, what was happening in Melanie Wood's talk. So when there's a root of unity, uh, the class group or maximal ramified extension of a number field acquires some additional structure. And it's important to remember that structure. That's a lesson from that first talk of the conference, right? So the point I'm making is this structure that we like to remember is really coming, it is really this arithmetic term So this makes this sound more interesting than before. <laughs> so, Okay, so they, in fact, like this structure appeared first in work of uh, Zimmerman, Sawi, and Lutnowski that uh, realized that by using this, we can explain some of the skewing <coughs> or the coin less heuristics when you look at class groups that contain a root of unity. So, I should, so the, the C skews. So I'm just going to write this, I just essentially said it, uh, when it's but also So this is like this was this essentially the cyclic case because you're looking at the class group, so we're looking at that billion Z. But there is a corresponding story for non-abillions. So what, what happens for non-abillions? Well, in fact, here I kind of prepared the following conjecture, but now I realized after hearing the first talk that this is obsolete, the sense that there's something a lot better. So fix D and fix N, fix omega. Yeah. And let's assume that there's no reason for the invariant to die. That's kind of stupid. So if I look at the map from the universal coefficient sequence, oops, three, Z, Z, Z more than. So that omega doesn't die under this moment. Okay. So what I want to say is that a positive proportion, so this is a little bit. Eight. Of n over k with z and k and the Gallagher would be z non ramified, so sorry. Right. Uh, have this uh, corresponding Sir Simon, arithmetic Sir Simon's to be non trivial. I mean, somehow, so you expect, so what I'm saying here is that all possible values of that invariant should be realized and in like kind of nice way, right? But I think that. Okay, so this I'm not entirely sure because it wasn't enough time to check, but I think this follows from the conjecture of solving wood that Melanie Wood talked about in the first talk. Uh, but it's definitely okay for three manifolds. So if I ask the same question for three manifolds instead of, you know, for like 
the Dean's Niagara Whitney variant, I think that it's true. So, the analog is analog for P manifolds. I'm not going to explain this again, what it means. Is okay. And then uh, this should be implied. Okay, implied, I'm not entirely sure, but I think so, <laughs> by conjectures of having some good. And the third point I'm going to make it says that uh, uh, these guys are important. In counting such extensions. Why am I saying this? Like this comes from the combination of the stuff before, and the, this discussion about the coherent lens heuristics being skewed by the presence of the root of unity. But we said that uh, uh, I said that it was observed by Lipnowski and Zimmerman and Savage that. If you don't take the psi that appeared before into account, you get the wrong distributions. So you have to remember the psi, and in general, you have to remember this CS omega. Yeah. Is it clear that there would be some unreified extensions? Is that some? Is it possible there's no unreified extensions? Or does that assumption somehow preclude that? No, but I mean, I'm allowing K to be a Oh, K is very Yeah, yeah, K oh. is very oh, yes. fine. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Otherwise, it would be crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're varying K over. I'm very, I mean, I'm very K among all the fields. The only restriction it contains the nth root of unit. So, okay. I mean, like, this is not so unreasonable. Yeah, this case. Okay, so that's the point about the uh, Hims variant. So, now, uh, let's go on in uh, more, say, complicated situations, or maybe simpler. Because, so let's, like, after you've seen this, you realize that you can do this for more situations, like any Galois cover, you can play the same game. So let me kind of explain something about those lines. <laughs> so uh, Z covers, and maybe and then later local systems. So again, with fix, it's always the same things. Fix uh, these things. And then let's say now I have the Z cover. Let's say this is a curve. So smooth projected relative curve. Now let's say, so there's some scheme that then is invertible. Then you can do the same thing. So you have them not in the class funny space. And now we do the following. Uh, you go from this, you pull back again to this, and now you go down by F or star or sleep, whatever it is. Now, I mean, I'm, and I didn't say there's a root of unity, I'm allowed to twist, it works, so I'm going to land in S. K twist, if you want to so do it correctly, it's going to be in this. So this is a minus from K twist. But so, so, all right. So now I can, so I get an invariant in there. So you can do this, or you can do a lot of other things. So for example, another thing you can do is you can say, let's say it's be the moduli. So let's say S is not a complex number. It just makes sense. Moduli star of Curves with a um, Z cover or something. With, let's maybe go on the top with three Z axes. I can try to parameterize by the top and then take a question. Right? So you do the same thing. Now there is S is going to be some kind of moduli space, and H1 of that would be like. Uh, essentially, the cohomology of the mapping class group of that of that space, right? So, so I'm not gonna write this precisely, but you can say 
mapping class group of the corresponding modulite, right? And now there's no twist to think about, so you get a map like that. And now it's reasonable to think that this factors this way. So, uh, so, so this should, should come as follows. You should have uh, a map should come from uh, the character since uh, the map corresponding map in class group into states three limbs. And the statement that this should be as rich as possible would be now the claim that uh, if G is sufficiently large, this is subject to this subject. So I guess you can think of it as a conjecture, but I didn't give you enough details to really <clears throat> make precise sense of that, but right? So I'm trying to say like this construction should be giving you a character of the mapping class group with values of this homology group. And the statement that these invariants are as rich as possible translate to this map being subjected. Okay. Count for various dualities. But you cannot expect it to be subjective maybe for all G, just for G, but for G sufficiently large. So there's some stability here. But it doesn't seem to me that this follows from stability results as far as I know. At least I asked some people in the mapping class group community they didn't know this. Uh, yeah. I think I got lost somewhere. Yes. Going between curves and free map. Oh, now this became completely cohomological construction. I guess uh, maybe my question is kind of more philosophical. Yeah. No, it, my, my point was okay, we had this. So now I'm jumping away from this word or like three manifolds and number fields. I'm saying there was this homological construction. I can do this every time. I mean, so. Well, not every time, but I mean, I can find a lot more other situations where I can imitate this and get something interesting. Well, is there any reason that we choose curves here? As a uh, well, not really. I mean, like, I think I want to talk about this fact, I mean, so, uh, but I can do, and I will do a more general construction. It's the choice of the number three, I guess. It's, it's the choice. Yeah, the choice of the number three. In general, you have to to take other numbers, you know, like for example, if it's relative dimension D, you'll go to 2D minus one up here or something, like or plus two, I don't know. Plus one, two D plus one. Yeah. In this last line, the penultimate line had a Z mod N. Does the Z mod N somehow appear in the last line? Or is it not? No, no, the point here is that I expect, I mean, like if you have such a thing, you can sort of use it like, I don't know. Uh, universal coefficient here to sort of get things like that for all n, but I cannot. I'm not saying I I, I know how to make this. Certainly, I'm I'm just saying it should come from something like that. Oh. So, yeah, this I'm not the not an expert. <laughs> okay, but there are some cases where this is known. So somehow, if instead of a finite group, you take z to be like the whole sort of H1 of the surface. So you look at, in this case, the, the mapping class group would be like uh, this, you know, like it has to preserve that uh, quotient. In this case, this is basically the Torelli subgroup. And now if you do H3 of H1, it becomes the third exterior power. And in this case, you if you see something that's called the Johnson homomorphism. So, so there is analogs of that, uh, but not for finite group all the time. So this um, so mapping class group. Well, I mean, I, I said this is fine, and so this is not doesn't fit exactly what I'm saying. This is, so I'm being vague here. 
and then the amount is so if you do this, you get this, this guy. This is uh, it's called and it's okay again you can do this for a billion of our city groups so we have time to give, to give you all these details all right so now what happens if you want to push this up and notch a little bit more so you can do the same thing for uh, local systems but now i'm talking about the attic without local systems so if I have one of these things, so now my setup is like this. Now I say I'm walking, I'm along with their feet. Now let's again say that this is again a relative pair, smooth projective. And now uh, this is my local system. You can think of it as a representation of the atom. I mean, I'm going to be slope here. ZP, so that's what I mean. That's, it's a ZP local system here. But now I can sort of go down to the various uh, options. These are covers for this finite group. So I can do the same game for these covers and then take a limit. So I can do this, so I can do H, 3, Z, let's call this Z, M. I fix the uh, I fix that end first, and I go into here, right? Then I take a limit over uh, the M, right? Uh, which means I kind of realize this. I have continuous topology of. I guess it's not. Well, no, I don't do this yet. So I take a limit like that. Um, these are done by the inflation maps. And then a further limit, a further is now inverse limit. Okay, sorry, here. I'm going into H1 minus. Then a further limit here. And this produces some of it that's kind of quickly, so this produces after you also kill the option at the end. All of this So you have uh, a map like that. Now, at this point, I started from the whole group. I didn't kind of, right? I didn't pick an omega inside here, but like now I can pick an omega. So, so this is been calculated by Lazard. And Lazard shows that this is three over rank one generated by a single, let's see how I'm going to denote this, by a single element. Uh, <coughs> so now I can look at the image of L2 inside here. So L2 maps to uh, something in H1, HQP minus 1. Right? By doing this. So, this is a specific element here that sometimes is called the Piatic Borel regulator. So, what does this tell you? So, we can make the following definitions. So, here's my setup. I have a local Piatic local system of, the, uh, say, a relative curve like that. It was called, say, a row. I can say, here it is. So I can do uh, the periodic search simons, if you like, of rows. 
in this situation to be the image of this distinguished element inside H1. So, right? So, I don't know. So, the image of L2 is H1 as QP. H1. Right? Now you can say, oh, this is weird. What is that group? I mean, or my, maybe there are questions. <laughs> so, any questions before I come kind of, about this construction? So, what I did is I started with the periodic local system. I did the previous construction, I applied the limit. Okay, kind of wave my hands a little bit and I got them up like that. You can construct this more directly anyway. Right now I'm saying by Lazard, this is generated freely by distinguished element. It's called the periodic regulator. Now I take the image of that under this to land in this group. So now this is the periodic sign once if you like. Or, or even you can call the periodic volume. Prefer that lives inside there. Okay, so now maybe at this point it's useful to observe that you can do this in general. Okay, I've been saying cares, cares, just to stick with it, it's free, but there's nothing stopping me to express this in general. Sorry, yes. Um, to just orient myself. So usually I have a turn sign invariant of a three manifold, which is a number, and then you have some turn sign invariant of a two manifold that's a line, a right. line bundle line. So this is playing the role of that the, that one, right? It's not the analog of the number. Are you it's it's like the analog of the number, somehow, but that more thing to, yeah, it's all a string. Right. Yeah, I don't know how to, to think of this. It. It's like a different construction, maybe. I mean, that doesn't really fit in the EQFD, in my understanding, so well. But... I, I think the picture is that your free manifold was fibered over a circle. Yeah, you play right. Game and you would get across right. an H1 in the circle. And right. You can right. Make that. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, maybe this answer is better. If I, my free manifold is a mapping box, <laughs> then what I'm doing is the analog of that situation. So I have a curve and... But I can think about something that over the circle. Yeah, it's something that it wants to be integrated further to get the information. Right, right. Yeah, you don't have to. Right, but let me explain now what's it, what we can do in general. So in general, say we have a scheme over in there P, and then you have a periodic local system for P is Like this, continuous representation of the adult fundamental group. And now the same type of pullback construction gives you this. So for any K now, I can go and do. At this point, I'm not saying X is a relative dimension. I don't want to kind of keep go, go even lower. I'm just looking at this. I can go from continuous topology class to without uh, topology of X. So again, by pulling back by the classifying map for rho, essentially. Right? So maybe I'll write it like this. Okay. Because this, like this gives you bracket rho. Okay, this is a little bit, you have to be careful here, but let's pretend you can do this. And this is what you're really doing again. So it can be, can be done rigorously, right? Now, again, by Lazar, this is QP of some distinguished class. This is the periodic regulator. Uh, so I guess I can think of this. Okay, so this is usually the a regulator is expressed uh, as a functional homology, but regulator 
but it's equivalent to sort of doing it this, this way. And then the definition is, let's say C plus K, or maybe a C plus KP, I don't know what's the correct definition here, would be exactly that pool, but also star. So now this will come, maybe I, I don't want to call this CS, sorry. Let's call this something else. So C hat KP overall, because I'm not gonna, I'm not integrating down yet. So this will be inside. And now, if I have further, you know, like if I think of X as being fiber to the further thing, I can push this further down. But now, if I say X is X, X relative dimension D, uh, and I still have my raw. Uh, Yeah, the local system on X, then I can define maybe here I can call it the periodic volume overall to be further pushing down this, but you do it of course for the correct dimension. I mean that the thing is D plus one. Okay. Of Okay, and this now lands with this. You might wonder, this is not so so great because okay, so you make something, it like appears in this thing. What is that thing? This is some kind of cohomology group that we don't kind of understand what it is. But here's an interesting fact. So this is the most interesting in this case, I think. So you have periodic numbers. And in this case, you have something that's called the block alpha exponential. That says that this guy, Yeah, I guess D is, is isomorphic to QP. So if you do this, then the periodic volume is really a periodic number in this case. So it's not just some abstract element. I mean, you can take the logarithm of that to make sense as a periodic number. Okay. So you really have this to be looking like a volume, right? a periodic volume of some sort. Okay, so now at this point, you don't know, again, you're in this situation where you don't know if you made something that's totally stupid. I mean, I mean you could make this and it's all trivial, right? So, you don't know. Maybe you just have a very fancy way of constructing a trivial class. Uh, Sorry, this is for any B? Yeah, for any P. You mean this? Then it would be palatine. Sorry? Palatine. What? But the palatine. The number D. Oh, D, no. Yes, D is for every, every, yeah, every D. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and P. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, well, okay, so if you do the same thing in the complex situation, there is some there is a theorem that by Resnikov that tells you that the secondary certain classes or certain Simon's invariant of some algebra of some like you know uh, representation of the fundamental group of a complex projective or the smooth projective variety, not just a manifold, they are torsion. 
And so now you're finding things in QP. So maybe by analogy, this is always trivial, right? I mean, it could be true, but it's not true. So there is a beautiful theorem of recent by a blue band and Sasa Petro, but yeah, the formula for this uh, volume under some additional conditions. Again, this is like 15. Now, the additional condition is the log the attic system which holds data. Uh, and then let me write the formula. And they say that the volume, my notation, the attic volume of the room is given by following expression. Just write it first. So I have certain character evaluated at the I graded R for the hot state filtration for B. Okay, so I need to explain some things here, I guess. Uh, so, so now what are these things? So maybe I should. That makes some sense of it. Now, these are actually some vector bundles. Now. They're algebraic vector bundles that you get out of the assumption that this is hot state. Now, to so this is the formula period, but now I'm trying to explain. So, a main example of hot state if you have the following situation if I have another like smooth proper uh, family of X, and then you take this to be given by the alcohol homology of the fiber, so something like uh, N, Z, lower star, or Z, B. So that would be called state. And in this case, there's uh, these deep theorems in the Adi code theory that tell you that, <laughs> tell you that this is called state. In this case, the graded pieces that I'm talking about there are just the same as things that you get by the rank of a motion. So it would be this, so the relative differential so T of X. So this is the main yeah. example. Yeah. Is there a, sorry, is there like a the usual description in much case you maps into some, some group that's not other classifying group for not that I know. I think this is a, it's it really means that if you tensor with a period drink, then it has a nice decomposition in this kind of sense of the Adic Hot Sphere. But I don't know the description in terms of mapping the classifying space. I just know nothing. Is this a structure or is it a property? It's a property. It's a property of the Adic local system and it's satisfied so all the things that come from geometry somehow when you have an actual scheme over it and you take the top homology of that scheme have that property provided this is smooth but it's not a structure so it still is a magnet e is still coming from a just a, a row just if you had it yes yes okay. oh it is a local system but z is like uh, like this is giving you an example of a local system that satisfies the condition being hot state, right, yeah. which is like a, the main example in some sense. That's what I'm saying. And now their theorem gives you this formula. And notice that this is like a rational number. It's not piadi. So this looks discrete. And a good guess is that this, like this classes, well, they are kind of interesting. They are not trivial, so you can use this to get an easy calculations so for things not being trivial. But they appear to be kind of rigid. So if you're moving in the family of local systems, they don't tend to. They shouldn't be moving. And I think Sasa Petrov is telling you to improve something like that. So anyway, so I guess that's that's it. I mean, if I have, I would like to explain some of the ideas in this. Beautiful thing, but I don't get that.